So for nine months now, I've been sitting here wondering, well, are, do we have anybody within the United States institutional apparatus that's trying to fight this? Because the, you know, the U.S. has you know, corrupted institutions, but they're not terminally corrupt. They're not monolithically corrupt, right? There are factions within the DOD. There are factions within the CIA. There's factions within the State Department, blah, 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 blah. You know, Trump tried to root some of this out by, you know, getting rid of the seventh floor foggy bottom and firing everybody on day one. The first, I think it was the seventh floor or the sixth floor, which is important, but it wasn't enough because all the Obamaites were on the lower floors and they were still there, still screwing everything else up. They got rid of some of it, but not all of it. The big one is, is there pushback against the um, from the banking system itself? The commercial banking lobby in the United States, as, as, as multiple members of my Patreon community have reminded me because they're in this business, the commercial banking um, lobbying in the United States is very, very powerful. And I'm not talking about the, the, the big money center banks like JP Morgan and BOFA and Wells and Goldman Sachs. I'm talking about the regional banks. You know, people forget that the United States is a very decentralized system, not just politically, but in every other facet of it as well. Our banking laws are different from state to state. Our insurance laws are different. Our, med- our medical licensing laws, everything is state based. And we, you know, state Supreme Courts almost have really as much power as the Supreme Court does if they would just exercise it. Right. Mm-hmm. Um I mean, there's ways that that's been neutralized over time, and that's a subject for a, const- a, a, a podcast series of podcasts on the usurpation of the Constitution. But understand that when push comes to shove, these these power these these things are very very powerful. What I'm setting up here is the reason why I believe that the Federal Reserve is off the reservation, because the goal of the Davos crowd of this international banking cartel centered around the city of London, along with the Europe, the old money European banks like Intesa Sao Paulo and Sant- Santander, you know, like Unicredit and BBVA and all Deutsche Bank and all those guys, right? All those yeah, old yeah. Dutch, ING, Dutch, German, British, and, and Italian banks and French, and French banks. Those banks, they drive a lot of this, right? Yeah. We yeah. can argue the Rothschild minority owned or majority owned central, you know, national central banks argument. I mean, don't even need to go there. What's important here is understand that their goal is to take away the power of the commercial banking system to transmit money around the world and transmit credit and assess the quality of collateral because that's what a bank's supposed to do, right? So if that is our problem, okay, and they want to get rid of that and transfer all that power to the central banks, issue central bank digital currencies to put us all on a China style social credit system, actually a worse system than any, even what's in China today. They want are the very powerful decentralized commercial banking interests in the United States going to roll over, going to go gently into that good night? No, not when they have the most powerful central bank in the world just designed from the ground up to provide them the liquidity necessary to get through any financial crisis with the deepest and most liquid bond markets in the world, with the deepest and most liquid equity markets in the world, with the deepest, with the, with the still the best versions of rule of law and contract enforcement and court system and all of that at the, at the regional and state level of anywhere else in the world, as bad as compromises rule of law is, is here in the United States, it's still better than almost the rest, almost all of the rest of the world. So with all of that, do you really think JP Morgan is going to give up uh, control of, you know, dollar, the, the, the dollar to Klaus Schwab and George Soros or whoever they represent? Of course not. And so now you've got to start crafting the theory of if that's the case. How are they going to do that? And I've, I've argued this in the past, and I'm, I don't need to go over it in grave detail here because I've argued it in the past. Go back and listen to previous podcasts that I've done and previous read other things that I've done. I've always had the problem of saying, okay, if the Fed's off the reserve and is out of the central bank cartel, you know, central bank cartel, which is the kind of the monetary system we've had since the fall of Lehman Brothers for about 14 years, they're all coordinating monetary policy. Mm -hmm. Then how are they going to do this? Because always in the past, whenever the Fed has tried to pull back on liquidity, then the global markets scream and then they have to reverse course. And so many people have a perception mismatch of that the rules have changed. In 2017, we implemented SOFR, S-O-F-R, the Secured Overnight Funding Rate. This is what blew Alex's mind before we, before we formally started the podcast. In years past, every time we've had a financial crisis in the past, well, uh, the Fed tries to raise 
interest rates, pull back on liquidity, and then the European banks, which are you know are really vulnerable to this because they're in far worse shape because they don't have a unified central bank that can issue euro based liquidity. Their short term funding markets blow up. They their their plumbing seizes up. You know, and LIBOR blows out. Short term LIBOR blows out as everybody's scrambling for money, and then LIBOR blows out. Now what happens? Well, there. So the Fed raises a quarter of a point and LIBOR blows out by two points or half a point or whatever they do. And then LIBOR blows out by two three points, three points, four points, whatever. And what happens? Well, in previous times, LIBOR is what also indexed all of U.S. debt. Now, there could be no fundamental problems in the United States credit markets. But if LIBOR blows out by 4%, your variable rate mortgage goes out by blows out by 4%. Your credit card goes from 9.9% fixed to 14% fixed. Your your car loan gets your you know your car loan your your the, the credit terms on car leases and you know and your and your revolver loans for your small business all of that stuff just blows out overnight but has nothing to do with actual stress in the US financial system it's all about the european financial system which ties into jeff snyder over at lomba partners argument that the euro dollar markets have been setting a dollar monetary policy for 50 years and not the federal reserve so how do you drain the euro dollar market? If he's right, then how do you drain the euro dollar market? You break the link between LIBOR and U.S. debt, and you allow Europe's debt to to deal with its own problems, and you allow U.S. debt. They're two separate markets, and so for is by the way a market rate designed that you know the daily the daily fix is based on market data, and it's a couple billion dollars worth of transactions a day in the overnight funding markets in the United States. LIBOR is set by eighteen. Be- me- 18 banks, only one of whom is actually American, JP Morgan's London office, and all the other LIBOR banks are European, mostly City of London, and then the aforementioned European banks. So you have a euro, you have an offshore dollar market setting monetary policy for the United States based on the needs of 17 different, at minimum, 17 European banks. This system has to end. And then you have a complicit Congress, all, you know, all, um, what's the word I'm looking for? All, um, you know, got compromat on them or ideologically aligned with these people to bring in a global super state technocracy. They're all bought off by Soros or Schwab or this one or that one. And you can see what they've been doing since the Joe Biden administration was selected and, and installed in the White House because he wasn't elected. That's anybody, anybody with three brain cells knows that. So this is the, this is the thesis. I was always lacking the catalyst. What's the, 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 what's the mechanism by which the Fed can pull back on the liquidity, offshore dollar liquidity, and actually make it stick? And this is what all everybody is missing. It's already in place because of so January 1st, 2022, all new debt in the United States is indexed to SOFR. By the way, over the last four years, Something like 95 to 96% of all US domestic debt has been re indexed to SOFR. It's all legacy debt. All that, that's been rewritten. The contracts have been rewritten. You've gotten new terms of service, blah, 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 in your credit card statements, blah, all that stuff. So all the contracts have been rewritten. I think there's something like, I think they estimate it's about 40 to $50 billion worth of, Amer- worth of American debt that's still indexed to LIBOR, which is not enough if the Fed gets really hawkish to stop. Right. <laughs> destroying Europe and not and this and this is the, this is the situation I see coming and so now we have some new indicators and some new ways to analyze relative stress in within the two markets uh Europe versus the United States so that's my thesis yeah, I, don't cool. know, so, I don't know if I'm right or not but that's my thesis yeah well I think I think it's a very very interesting thesis and I think that uh, uh you know obviously I haven't gotten into it as deeply as you have but it actually does make sense. And I have to say that I had the same uh, question uh, in my mind, like how on earth are they going to get rid of these banks Mm -hmm. to usher in the CBDC when these banks are actually the the owners of the Fed Mm -hmm. and they, they run the show in the United States, right? So... They're not going to just say like, okay, we're going to, we're going to all just dismantle all this and, and go away. It's like almost inconceivable. I don't know what the hell they were thinking. 